Okay, everybody, here we go. The countdown to totality is on. That is a live picture looking at Carbondale this afternoon for this historic day in Southern Illinois. Thousands of people are gathered right now and you see them right there as the Lukey Stadium on the campus of Southern Illinois University. It's a party down there playing some music, getting ready to see totality. In just under an hour from now, we're going to see a total solar eclipse there in Carbondale for the second time in seven years. We were there the last time, too. Yeah, wow. And Carbondale and SIU calling themselves the Eclipse Crossroads of America. Here in the Chicago area, we'll see a partial eclipse at about 94%, so you're going to see something here. It's not going to be the 100% like it is down in Carbondale and other places across the country. There has been so much excitement around here. The planning that went into this is, I mean, it's so exciting. We have an entire team spread out across the area. We also have live cameras across the country. We have a team in the booth monitoring sort of the, the path of totality right, right. times. Hopefully we get to see it as soon as it hits the U.S. and then we'll take Take you all the way through to Southern Illinois. This is already happening in parts of the world. So Judy and I are so excited to be <laughs> here with you as we take this journey into history. It's something we just don't see very often. Yeah, forever we'll know that we were right here for right. this where you solar said, somebody eclipse. Said that, you'll never forget where you were this moment this thing happens. And uh, well, here it's we going to be right here <laughs> and you with us as well. All right, so a quick uh, background on the solar eclipse. Of course, it happens when the moon passes between the sun and Earth completely blocking the face of the sun. The sky will darken at that moment as if or dawn or dusk. Right now, the eclipse crossing North America, passing over Mexico, the United States and Canada. There's a nice look at the map as it goes across North America. I think about 15 states are in the path of totality and of course right here in Illinois. So here's a look at some of the times of totality. So Mazatlan, Mexico is one of the first in just a few minutes at 107 hour time that totality will hit. Of course, all eyes around here will be on carbon at the bottom of the hour at 159. Just about seven minutes later, central Indiana will reach totality. Halton, Maine will be one of the last places in the U.S. to reach totality just after 2.30 our time this afternoon. So many experts to help us get through this, so we'll do our best to educate you as we learn along the way. <laughs> yeah. Everyone in the United States is going to see a partial eclipse yes. today, like us, and some, as you mentioned, in those states of totality. We have extensive live coverage for you this afternoon from all along that path of the eclipse. We want to begin with hey, meteorologist Larry Mowry at Saluki Stadium in Carbondale. <laughs> Larry's ready to go down there. We're psyched to talk to you all afternoon, buddy. Yeah, I tell you, the, the excitement is building right now, too, because the moon has started to cover part of the sun here. And what was really interesting, it started right around 5 o'clock on the sun, and now it's starting to cover the sun a little bit more. Of course, we don't reach totality here until 1.59. And what they're doing behind me, you hear the countdown in the background, they're launching a balloon, almost like a weather balloon. There goes one right there. It's got instruments. You see the box attached to the balloon? Those have instruments in them where they record temperatures, and they also have a video camera. So as that balloon goes up into the sky, they're going to collect a whole bunch of data. It's going to go to 75,000 feet in the air and gather all this great information because what happens to the atmosphere when there's an eclipse and a total eclipse is it changes. It changes the temperatures. It changes the wind flow patterns. It changes the pressure. So all those measurements that that balloon will take will help scientists understand what happens to the atmosphere when we have a total solar eclipse. And so it's really exciting here. And uh, I'm on the stadium here. So this is Saluki Stadium. And to give you a sense of the uh, crowd here, it's at least about 13,000 people all in the stands. And they're doing a presentation right now where they're educating people about the eclipse and everything. And they're showing all types of uh, different uh, interesting science experiments they're doing as well. And so it's really a fantastic opportunity for friends and family and kids to come down here to Saluki Stadium and kind of get a first hand account of what's actually happening. Now, I got a picture of the eclipse I want to show you as right now as well from our another camera we have here in the stadium. 
And you can see how the moon is partially covering the sun right now. It's really quite a sight. Obviously, you need glasses to see this. We've got a special filter on our camera, and it really is an amazing sight to see. I'll put my glasses back on too, so just to get a view of it again, because every few seconds to minutes or so, I got to take a peek at it because it is it's such a wondrous sight to look at. And between now and 159, that moon's going to travel right over that sun, blocking the light and give us total solar eclipse. And Rob and Judy, I tell you, it's going to be a, another emotional sight for me. I can guarantee that. I got a little teared up in 2017 during the last eclipse down here. I guarantee you, I'll probably be crying, maybe crocodile tears this time, because it is it is truly a moving experience to witness the, uh, the event. I tell you, I, I liken it to, uh, there's this saying, the power of the awe moments, the like wow moments, or like when you come across a mountain scene and you just go, wow and awe. That kind of moment kind of takes you out of yourself. It takes away your ego, it takes away your problems, and you feel part about something else and feel a part of the universe to some degree. And to experience it with all these people around me, it's gonna be quite a scene and quite a sight to see. I'm, I'm super excited for it. I, I love that view with our camera. Larry, I know you were in Carbondale in 2017 when this happened. Explain just how rare that is for one town to see the total solar eclipse, what, in a span of seven years? Yeah, it's, it's extremely rare. It's just a fortunate coincidence here in Carbondale. For any one spot on Earth, it's about every over 300 years or more before you get a total solar eclipse to occur twice in the same spot. That's the, the math calculations. But get this, Robin Judy, what is interesting is that about every 18 months, somewhere on Earth, there's a solar eclipse, sometimes partial, sometimes total. So it does happen in some frequent somewhere on the earth but to have it in the same spot within the span of seven years is extremely rare and that's what kind of makes Carbondale so special and I tell you the town the university they've all rolled out the red carpet for all the visitors they're expecting you know a hundred thousand people here in Carbondale the town size is just over 20,000 so everybody's just flooded into town here today Larry stay with us uh, on the left if you're joining us that is a live picture of the eclipse so Cool. underway from Carbondale. Uh, we're going to go to the total solar eclipse, though, now happening in Mazatlan, Mexico. So we mentioned, look at oh, that. Wow. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Judy. So that's the camera looking at the skies in Mazatlan, Mexico. Earlier, uh, when ABC network cameras were there, you could see people lined up on the beaches there uh -huh. waiting to watch this moment. So this is the in the path of totality. This is what Carbondale will see in other parts of Indiana and Southern Illinois. Uh, and as we watch this with you, you'll start to see the peaks of the sun uh, behind the moon. And it's just great to talk to Larry about the specifics of why this is so rare. And I heard a fact, Judy, that that blew my mind. So one of the reasons this is totality is because the sun is 400 times the size of the moon, right? But in some strange universal solar system thing, it's also 400 times farther from Earth. Hence, we get this perfect totality. totality. Wow. Yeah, so look at that. So this is a tight. Uh, say again, Corey, where's this? This isn't. Okay, okay, okay so, so this is in Texas. Okay. Yeah, so that uh, top li live uh, Mazatlan, Mexico. Uh, ignore that with this. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, we, we haven't done, we, we do, we haven't done this very often, so I it's going to so, be fun to watch. So Texas would be sort of the next major place that we will hit here in the U.S., and we do have a camera monitoring that is. situation there. Earlier, we were just chatting with um, Larry about how unusual it is for us here in Illinois, for Carbondale, Illinois, to be in the path of totality twice yes, in seven right. years. Right, since 2017. So this is Junks in Texas, and if you're streaming with us uh, on an app or whatever you're using, we're likely on a delay with where you are. So it's a good idea to look down on our clock there. And then you can also look when we can show you Junction, Texas. That's the real time. Uh, so you might be like, okay, oh, it's a is, few minutes late. I, there it is. There that's it is. back at Mazalana, uh, Mexico. Mexico. Look at that. Oh, man. Maybe pause for a second and let you take that in. Even on TV, it's really, it, it's just something to see. Uh, this, so this is happening right now uh, down in Mazatlan, Mexico, uh, as this now will trek northeast and then get into North America. 
the crowd re reaction when Larry and those see that with their own eyes, um, it's just gonna be, we're gonna get to experience that with them. Okay, so for all of you who are streaming with us, if you don't have a chance to go outside and you don't have those special glasses, this is not a bad way to see it <laughs> through our news cameras. I mean, that's a phenomenal sight. And we're gonna get to see it over and over again because we have so many cameras in so many locations uh, that we're gonna bring it to you from different places. And so now you can tell wow. as it's getting brighter uh, the moon is going to continue to pass over the sun and then this will become a partial eclipse. But you've just watched total totality in Mexico with us uh, as we just get it closer and closer to about 2 p.m. here, a uh, central time. Where we're going to start to see some of this stuff. I, I have to do my mom thing because I did this morning when <laughs> AJ left the house. So many schools around here holding viewings today. Um, so is my son's middle school, my daughter's high school. And my reminder is do not take off those special viewing glasses when you're looking at the you sun. You can't. You got to leave yeah. them on. Uh, these cameras that we show you have filters yes. on them that allow yeah. us. I want to ask Larry, are those flares? Actually, we have another meteorologist who's an expert as well. Uh, and there's our countdown right now, the solar eclipse in central to our totality yeah, in central Indiana. Oh, okay. And so uh, su southern Illinois, uh, a little farther from that, obviously, in Carbondale. But this is where a uh, meteorologist Greg Dutra will be. Uh, he is in central Indiana near Indianapolis. Oh, there, there, he is. there he is. Uh, so we got lots of questions for you experts hey. here. First of all, how you doing? Set the scene for us yeah. there. And then we're going to fire off a few Q&A with you uh, so we can learn more and more as we continue Good. down this path. How are you? I'm doing great. We're in Fishers, Indiana. So uh, we knew pretty much from the start that Larry would have good weather in Carbondale. Indiana was a bit of a coin flip. And as you can maybe see behind me, there is some hazy, thin, cirrus clouds. So we're here at Connor Prairie. We chose this spot not only because of the venue, but also because it's very close to the highway. And we were going to treat this like a storm chase if we had to, if there was low clouds. And we were going to get on. We were going to be mobile and agile and get you a view of totality, uh, another view in addition to the one in Carbondale. But thankfully, things are panning out. We've got that little bit of thin cloud cover and as we're taking a look at the view of not only uh, totality from Mexico but multiple totalities across the US I want you guys at home to take in two things or be on the lookout for two things one uh, are solar spots or sunspots rather we pick them up on our camera there are definitely two that are on the Sun right now and those look like little specks of dust that are on the Sun areas that are slightly cooler in the Sun surface uh, where solar flares will erupt from so that's one thing to keep an eye out for. Another thing is as you reach totality, watch out for something called Bailey's beads. And these are little like pearls that form around the edge of the uh, sun or the edge of the moon rather during totality. And what that is, is sunlight making its way through features on the moon's surface. The moon is not completely flat. It's got valleys, it's got mountains, and the sun will slip through that. And those are those little cracks of light that you see that almost looks like a string of pearls. You're actually looking at the topography of the moon. But again, back here in Fishers, Indiana, uh, our totality is going to be at 2.08 Central Time. That's 3.08 Eastern Time, which is what we're on. And it's going to last for about 3 minutes and 40 seconds. And as Larry said, uh, this place is just vibrating with energy right now. Folks know what's going to happen. Some of them saw the eclipse back in 2017. Some of them know how important this event is. They're treating it like the moon landing back in 1969. Anybody who witnessed that, they knew where they were, they knew who they were with, they knew exactly how it went down. They could probably remember the smell of the room or what they had for breakfast. That's going to be like the event today. It will live with people for the rest of their lives. They get to experience totality. And the last time that totality happened in this very spot where I stand, I asked Butler University about this, 831. 831. 1200 years ago, the Mississippian cultures, right? Mound building cultures. This was pre-Columbian. Uh, when the Europeans got to America, they didn't even make contact with these cultures. They didn't leave any written record of being around. We had to learn from the artifacts and Woodhenge, which they built, which is basically like Stonehenge, but our North American version of it. So they tracked these things. The eclipses were very important to them, and it's very important to us here as we stand today. It's just a very special event, guys. I am stunned at that number that you just told us. How long ago? I'm yeah. Thinking, oh, wait, August 31st? <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, uh, it was that long ago. Yeah. Eight, <laughs> eight thirty-one. That's incredible. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Hey, Greg, I have a quick question, yeah. um, I, and I hope you have the answer. I, I imagine a lot of people are going to be pointing their cameras, their smartphones, up in the sky, trying to grab that picture or the mm -hmm. video. Is that completely safe? 
It, 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 I mean, it's not great for your camera phone. Um, what you want to do is it's it's going to be like when you take a picture of the moon and the moon looks really cool, and then you look back at the picture and you're, you're like, what? <laughs> what is this? Uh, so it's, it's the same type of deal. I mean, it's not going to be as good as just taking it in oh. with your glass with your eyes through the solar glasses uh, if you do want to take a picture just to remember it um, take a picture through your solar shades and you'll actually have the filter it's almost like putting a filter on your camera but again oh. we got the special cameras we got live views personally for me like I don't want to take any pictures while this goes down I don't want to take any video I want it to like live inside of me uh, for the rest of time instead of taking out my phone and shooting it you but, know, it's you know if, it's, if you feel like it go ahead it's funny you say that because I, I think it was an astronomer I saw over the weekend who, who said your first eclipse put the phone down I mean how many videos are we gonna see and how many pictures and really and let we'll that, provide the video yeah, right, for right. you let that visceral moment uh, right. take effect take effect yeah. and uh, I think that's great advice yeah. uh, for you Greg as well uh, we're gonna come back to you uh, thanks a lot I hope it clears up in okay. Fishers Indiana yeah um, so stay with us uh, we also have okay. our other meteorologist Cheryl Scott oh, is not right. far from us here She's at the Adler yes yeah, a big party <laughs> going on there look at all the folks yeah I mean, it is just crazy out here. By about 11 o'clock, people started filling in, and now I would say just thousands of folks out here at the Adler Planetarium, obviously in Chicago. What a place to be. We are also learning so much and taking this all in together as a community. Everyone has the eclipse glasses here. Adler has been giving those out and just one of those days, a sense of wonder in the world of science. Now we are just north of the path of totality, so we won't be seeing that moon completely blocking out the light from the sun, but we will see a really good view of the partial eclipse and 94 percent of that sun will be blocked. I'm going to bring in astronomer right now, Andrew, with Adler Planetarium, and we're gearing up for this. We're excited, but I want to talk about the partial eclipse because I know we're not in the path of totality, but there are really cool things that we can witness and experience here in Chicago. Yeah, a total eclipse is one of those magical things that if, if you can travel and get to, that's great to see. We have quite a show here in Chicago, too. Thank you, Universe, for giving us a, cl a cloud-free day. Uh, so over the next hour or so, the moon is going to be covering the sun. We're now about, it's about 15% covered or something like that. And then uh, leading up to about 2 p.m., 2.07, the specific time when the sun will be 94% covered. And at that time, we'll see that solar disk, but it's not a disk, right? It's going to be that crescent shape. And you said we could possibly see some other effects because of the placement of the moon and the sun, potentially a dimming of the sky, not out of the question here today. Yeah, that's true. It all depends on the atmospheric conditions, but it'll be getting a little bit dimmer. Uh, one thing that I noticed last partial eclipse I saw in is that the shadows looked a little different. They looked a little more sharper, a little bit more defined. Another thing I'd encourage people to look up in the sky, it's possible that if you look to the southwest where the, where the sun uh, is, compare that to the sky in the northeast, you might be able to see an effect of the moon's shadow to the southwest. It's a little bit darker that way, but we'll see. Depends what the uh, atmosphere gives us today. And so many folks are out here today as a scientist and working with the Adler. What does it mean to just have this many people gathering for an event <laughs> that could potentially be just once in a lifetime for many people? Yeah, so eclipses are exciting things for uh, two reasons. One is that it makes you gives you an understanding of how the universe works. You can you can look up in the sky and you can see the, the Earth going around the sun and the moon going around the Earth. But also, it's an emotional moment where look at all these people here. They could have stayed in their backyards, but you're not, you're here, right? Woo! Yeah, yes. because, because because, because we're here in our community and doing it together, so we're really happy to be hosting that here. I love that. Thank you so much. Sure. We really appreciate it. I knew you want to get back up to looking at that partial eclipse that has begun here. We had first contact at about 12.51. At 2.07, we'll be reaching that max totality here in Chicago of 94%. That is more than back in 2017, which was 87%. So many out here today, and I just love today being a meteorologist, being a scientist. Every Everyone coming out here and especially for the little kids that come out and watch something like this it could really just awaken the sense of wonder there might be a lot of future scientists here at the Adler today and I just I just love everyone coming together right can we hear it Chicago we we are so ready all right we're gonna send it back to you we're getting close guys
That is so true, Cheryl. I was just saying earlier that so many schools right now are holding their viewing parties, sending the kids outside. My kids are going to be out there with their special glasses on. It is very exciting to, to see the newer generation, the young generation getting all excited about this. Yeah, it absolutely is. Uh, Cheryl, stay with us. I know we'll go back to you, as you mentioned, about 207 Chicago time. Uh, we'll get to our 94% here. Uh, it's interesting because in we keep talking about 2017. Yeah. Right? There's about 12 and a half million Americans uh, had a chance to see that. This time around, it's like more than 30 million. Something like that, yeah. So, so many more people are going to get a chance to experience something that uh, seven or so years ago was a lot more difficult um, to see. Uh, Western New York also in the path this afternoon with totality just about an hour away. And I believe right now we can check in. Yes, ABC's Rena Roy. She is standing by live in Niagara Falls. What a beautiful place this afternoon for this a total solar eclipse where 1 million people were told uh, were expected there today. Rena, take it away. Tell us what's going on there right now. Hey, Rob and Judy. Well, yeah, you can see behind me there are massive amounts of crowds. Uh, we have spoken to people from all over the world, from Colombia, from Costa Rica. You know, some people waking up as early as 3 o'clock this morning. Another family that we spoke to, uh, they started driving last night, drove through the night to get here and get that prime viewing spot. So take a look behind me here. You can see that some of the people here, they have tents, they have games, they have snacks, they have their chairs. They are ready to go, as you can see the backdrop, the beautiful Niagara Falls State Park. So certainly not a bad place to be. Um, you know, these two sisters I spoke with, uh, they woke up very early this morning, 3.30 in fact. You know, some families, they've been planning for this for years, since the last eclipse, really in 2017. So they really were not taking any chances when it came to uh, getting that good viewing spot. So you can see that people here, they're ready to go. We're just about an hour away from uh, the solar eclipse happening here in Western New York. Rena, there's probably no better spot in terms of nature oh, than yeah. Niagara Falls to watch this, but the weather has been a concern. We can see the mist behind you from the falls, but we're wondering what the forecast is there and if you are all going to get a chance to see this as we might down in uh, southern Illinois. Yeah, well, we are wondering that same thing, Rob, right? You know, we're used to the mist here at Niagara Falls. Of course, that's a given, but it is a little bit dreary, I have to say. It's been cloudy all day. We did see a little sliver of sun earlier this morning, but we've also been dealing with a little bit of rain. But, you know, people out here staying optimistic. We are all crossing our fingers out here today, hoping that we uh, get the big show and that the clouds cooperate. And, and Rena, the other concern I know going into today, a lot of cities and areas are getting ready for this influx of tours and so many people coming in. Of course, Niagara Falls is used to dealing with a lot of tours, but any other precautions and that they were taking ahead of today to get ready for such a large crowd? Right, well, you said it. This area, of course, one of the hotspot tourist destinations in the United States, right? Uh, but the mayor says that they are planning on breaking records. You know, as you said, about 1 million people are expected here. So we've seen hotels and businesses. They have really been ramping up staffing. And also the governor of New York has said that they created an interagency statewide task force that has been preparing for the last 18 months. So they've been ready for this. Uh, so, and we've been seeing that. We've seen security uh, around here in this area in the state park. Um, so we're all ready to go here. We cannot wait. Uh, Rena, thank you so much for joining us from Niagara Falls. Yes, what a beautiful place. If the sky's clear and you I get know. to see it. Hoping for a Thanks, sliver guys. of sunshine for you there. We appreciate yeah. you joining us here for our local coverage. Fingers crossed. Yeah, we'll talk to you again and hopefully it will clear up. Uh, Arkansas now. We want to take a look at that. Look at uh, that. Russellville, Arkansas. Is that over on camera uh, on your screen to the left yes. there? Uh, so this is underway in Arkansas, which is in the path of totality. Uh, Russellville, about 80 miles northwest of Little Rock. Uh, I have some family down. I was talking oh, to my nephew this uh -huh. morning They uh, at Henderson State University, where they live in Arkadelphia. They were having a big event like Southern food trucks at the stadium, getting ready for that. Said the same thing you said to your kids. Put your glasses on, boy. Just keep it on. Like, really? I said, absolutely. If <laughs> the whole up, time. Or you don't even, you know, if you don't want to wear them, you just want to look around. Yes. I think for a lot of people just to feel that, because I think this is yeah. going to happen here. It's just 
the air is going to turn a different color and it's just a, a weird feeling overall. And you don't even need to look up. And if they you said don't you want can to. feel maybe the temperature dropping a little bit, right? I would sometimes be picks up. Curious to ask the kids as they're out there doing this viewing. So th take a look at that picture, another live picture for you. Again, that's looking in the skies in Arkansas. So we are we have cameras throughout uh, the country looking up at the skies tracking and again we have special filters there so you really can see it beautifully. You really can. You, you don't have to wear those glasses at all because you can just watch it here on the screen. You wow. mentioned a lot of schools doing things yeah. uh, today for for the kids. Mm. So first of all just going outside on a day like How this fun. in Chicago yes. is fun. And a beautiful yeah. day for it. <laughs> but schools here in the Chicago are using today's solar eclipse as a learning opportunity for a lot of students. Yeah okay I'm just going to look down to see this. So that's from Texas. That's Yes, yeah, that's in Texas. And John Garcia live here in Palatine. Oh, right well, at a high school ready. there, yeah. I think, right? Are you, are you on the football field, it looks like? Hey guys. Absolutely. You know, I, if you gave me a choice when I was in high school, do I want to come up and watch the eclipse <laughs> or do I want to stay in the building? I think you know the answer, right? <laughs> right yeah. well, now, they are really excited, though. There's no doubt about this. This is really all about the eclipse. and. It's hard not to get excited because your enthusiasm is so contagious. This is Sean Fisher Rohde and you are the astronomy teacher here and what these these kids are getting a once in a lifetime experience is what what your take on it is, right? Thank you so much. Yeah, you know, I think they are. I, this is for a lot of these kids, they don't get to travel much. Uh, some that do, they don't realize that something like this doesn't happen every year around here. And I mean, really, it's it's about this community, having everybody come together, having everybody kind of share this moment together. The next eclipse on this scale isn't going to happen until 2099. It's, it's We're going to get one in 2044 up in Montana that will be very short lived because it's going to happen right around sunset. So really, this might be the last chance for most of these people, certainly the last chance for me in my lifetime. Well, it, this is like Christmas. Christmas, New Year's, birthday, all wrapped up in the one for you, I can tell. It really is. Um, you know, I've been talking about eclipses for a long time, and me and Mr. Tucker, uh, Mitch Tucker, who also teaches astronomy here, we've gotten students really interested in these kind of things that they can be involved with that happen really not that often, but boy, they can get involved in the science of astronomy, but really they bring other people together that get involved with this. I got emails from former students that are now grown up, that are now watching the eclipse with their kids. So they were cool. in my class 10, 15 years years ago, which is really amazing to me. Yeah. So you much got, fun. You got about 2,600 students in the school and about. just about mm -hmm. all of them are out, out in the field and in the stands right now, right? They're all enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And everybody got eclipse glasses. Uh, we have a whole bunch of other ways for them yeah, to view. I, I want to ask you about this. So you got yeah. kitchen instruments and stuff. Yeah. So it's really act like a little projector. The sun's light goes right through the colander and you can do this right at home and project it onto somebody's t-shirt or a, um, a white piece of paper works best and you can see the details. So as the moon is cruising across the sun or transiting in front of the sun, you'll see the moon projected in front of the sun. So this acts like a little projector. Um, you we also have, got some special binoculars yeah, here, right? Uh, yeah, I got these. Uh, they're, they're called Eclipse Safe or Solar Safe. These are only for looking at the sun. You can't see anything else. So we're able to take these out and the kids get a closer look at our star that's 93 million miles away and we're about 35 percent eclipse right now and so for the kids that have used these and look up they're getting an incredible look at something that really they could never have seen so many details on before we also have a telescope set up over there with a special filter on it where kids can see the the uh, uh, there's a sunspot group on there today so we're able to talk about that as well so anybody even the kids that aren't in our astronomy classes they're coming up with enthusiasm and, and they all have one thing to say when they look at the uh, when they look at the sun in the in the in the telescope, they all go, "Whoa, that is amazing!" You know, so it's really cool to be able to give them this opportunity. It's really really fun for all these kids, obviously, and I know they're all really excited. They want to be on TV. We'll give you a shot here. Excited. There you go. <laughs> the countdown is on. We're 35 percent, but 207 is when we're going to be at about 94 percent, right? 207 is about 94. That's the exciting moment for everybody. That's. Uh, We'll see, hopefully the sky will dim up a little bit. We're not gonna be 100% totality, but boy, we are gonna get a really good, as good as you can get. And how about this day? How about I, the, I don't see a cloud in the sky. Unbelievable, it really is. <laughs> All week we were looking at it and the threat of uh, thunderstorms were behind us. And on this day and a little bit in front of us, nobody thought we'd be outside today in t-shirts with this glorious, not a cloud in the sky weather. And it just makes everybody happy. Here it's, we are springtime. It's, it's so hard to predict because I know a lot of folks including uh, your former, your protege, Tyler Mishy is down in Texas and he figured there was a better chance of it being clear there. He's jumping out of an airplane and 
Now it's not looking so clear there, but we have perfect conditions here. We really do. And you know what? Even though Tyler, you know, I think he's going to jump. I'm really not sure. I texted him. It, but even if he doesn't get to go, it doesn't matter. It's about engaging people in something that's exciting. You know, Tyler and I, we cruise across the country and we talk about astronomy to people whenever there's a big event like this. And one thing always happens. People just get excited because everybody thinks that space is beautiful. And it really is. We're all connected to it in a way. We all look up and we all wonder what the moon is. We look up and we wonder about the stars and we wonder about maybe our zodiac signs and that's astrology. But with astronomy, you know, everybody is fascinated by with what they're seeing. And that's what brings everybody here together. And, and I love that. I, I really, truly do. And to me, it's just about community. That's something I've been preaching for a long time. But this isn't in the classroom. This is real life. Right. This is it. This is, this is the real deal. You know, I mean, look at all the people looking up with their eclipse glasses, all the people that are curious about what's going on right now with the moon and how it's happening. This brings people together like no other way. And it's just a little rock cruising in front of the sun. But I'll tell you, over the last few weeks, I've, I've spoken to I don't know how many hundreds of people and giving out thousands and thousands of eclipse classes uh, like this one, compliments of our Adler Planetarium here in Chicago. And people are, are ex so excited for this because they want to share it with their kids, they want to share it with their families, and they want to share it with their friends. And that's what today is all about. We're all sharing astronomy. Space is for everybody. Well, thank you for educating us and helping share your enthusiasm for My sure. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. It's, we're going to be out here. We're going to get to 94% uh, and we'll show you that a little bit later. But for now, live in Palatine, John Garcia, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Back to you guys. Space is for everybody. I love it. And I'm so excited for all the science teachers to have the undivided attention of thousands of right. their kids. <laughs> That's pretty spectacular. Yeah, and people are going to learn a lot from them, including us adults. Yeah. So we're nearing totality right now in Bandera, Texas at 132. Our reporter from our sister station, KTRK, Pooja Lodia, uh, is there live. We're hoping to check in with her. Oh, my oh, goodness. there she it's, is. It's darker. Is it dark there? Yeah. It is getting darker by the second. We are about to reach totality in less than one minute. And even as I'm standing there just talking to this camera, you can see just how dark it is getting. So we are in Bandera, Texas. It's right in the middle of Texas Hill Country. It's a beautiful area about an hour or so northwest of San Antonio. We are right now with several scientists, several researchers. Many of them are from Rice University in Houston. Some of them are with the museum. Museum of Natural Science, and many of them have seen these for many years. And listen, two, one, we are officially in the totality right now. You can see just how dark it is. I know we don't have a light on right now, but it really feels like it would be about, I would say, 8, 8.30 p.m. I've never seen it this dark right in the middle of the day. I don't feel right now the temperature going down, but I have heard from many people out here that the temperature often goes down as soon as this happens. One of the other things that we have heard is that we may start hearing some strange animal sounds. We may start even hearing some crickets. We are right now again in the totality. This is what all of these people traveled to be here for. I mean, we have talked to people from all over the world who have come here to Texas to experience this. Unfortunately, it has been extremely cloudy out here. We haven't seen much of the actual eclipse. But again, I have never seen it so dark right in the middle of the day. I can barely see actually where my photographer is right now and he's standing right in front of me. So it is extremely dark. It is, I can tell as I'm speaking right now, it is getting a little bit colder. And again, it just kind of a shocking experience for so many people out here. It really is sort of still, nobody's trying to move around so much, but I'm sure for a lot of these people, as well as for myself, this is an experience that we have never felt before. This is truly something unique and truly kind of a once in a lifetime thing for many of us. So I will send it back to you. But again, right now we are in the totality and you can see just how dark it is. Pooja, that is just amazing. So we have a dual screen up. Pooja can't see this, but of course, you know, we see her and then we have that separate screen that you can see uh, up in the sky and looking at that totality just pretty amazing. If you cannot be outside uh, watching this in person with special glasses, I have to say this is 
spectacular to watch it through the camera and, lens. And I was wondering, and she, we watched it happen as she was yeah. on the air, whether it's cloudy or sunny, uh, you're, if you're in the path of totality, it's going to get dark wow. like that. And if it wasn't for, you can see some of the uh, smartphone, you know, lights right, up, right. it would be completely black and dark. What yeah. a challenge for photographers who have to try and iris up and get you a clean shot. Oh yes, yeah. it all so in. kudos to all of them out yeah. there working so and trying to get that shot. That was our first time experiencing totality here with you uh, as our solar eclipse coverage continues. Uh, and, and I'm, uh, I mean, I had goosebumps <laughs> and that's in Texas. <laughs> What are we going to do when it hits? In Carbondale, right? I can't cry, Judy. I'm not even out there. So uh, right. it's moving to watch. I'll have uh, some tissues. Uh, right, in Texas to, to see uh, this force of nature in the universe happen right there uh, as we watch totality, okay. totality make its way. Uh, Where can we go next? I believe uh, we have more reporters Trey, out there. Yes, Trey, we're going to come back to Chicago uh, because we have a lot of coverage here from the local reporters who are out with students uh, and teachers and just Chicagoans enjoying this. And oh, this, Trey. Trey's got his on. You're going to need those coming soon soon uh, but what are you doing out there he's at the Pullman National Historical Park where this is a eclipse at the park under uh, event Love underway it. what's up Trey hey how's it going you guys yes it's already a jam-packed event and you guys said it. it's a spectacular event to look up every few seconds I've looked up and seen it covered more and more just a few minutes ago I heard that they've run out of their specialized glasses and it, there was about 200 of them so we know it's a jam-packed event I'm joining that right now with park ranger Lisa Burback so already a jam-packed event a lot of people out here talk about the excitement right now well, we have had, like Trey said, over 200 people here today. Um, we had 200 glasses and we have a crowd that far exceeds that. So we are considering this a very big success here today at Pullman National Historical Park. And the weather yesterday, we were concerned talking in the rain about the weather, but it's beautiful right now. We could not have asked for a more perfect day here in Chicago. The sun is out. It's a little bit windy, but hey, it's Chicago and 71 degrees. Couldn't ask for anything better. Now, we talked about this yesterday. You saw the 2017 eclipse, partial eclipse. Mm -hmm. What was that like for you? It was wonderful. I was in my backyard with some friends and it was a nice experience, but I did miss that feeling of community. So now working for the National Park Service, um, we have a National Park Service Visitor Center here in Pullman in our backyard. So we thought, what better way to bring the community for this eclipse than to have everybody together with some park rangers and a NASA ambassador. And so we're just really, really pleased. Yeah, the first of its kind right here on the far south side. Absolutely, yeah. So we are Chicago's first National Park Service unit in Chicago. And to have everyone here, we're mostly a history park, but to have everyone gather here for this really spectacular event just makes it all the more meaningful. All the kids are, are out here with their parents. Yeah. What does it mean to see that knowing this is the first event um, in 2017? You talked about living here in Pullman and not having that community, yeah. but now we're seeing it coming to life. Like I said, it's incredibly meaningful. Um, you know, we have really become sort of an anchor in the community and to have this very central place where families and community members can come together. It just it's making us us very, very happy to see it come happen. And it's educational because we have a NASA ambassador here. Yeah, um, we have a NASA ambassador. We have our Eclipse Junior Ranger program, which we've been getting so many calls about. Um, people love our Junior Ranger program to have this special badge just for the Eclipse um, is really exciting. We were speaking with some kids too. We were seeing their excitement too. What is it like for you to see just it come to life in such a way and this phenomenon? I mean, this doesn't happen often and we're seeing it on these little kids faces. It's incredible. I mean, I've had kids coming up to me, hugging me. Um, it just it's one of the things that makes this job very special. So to, to bring everybody together um, for this, you know, very, very rare event, we're not going to have another eclipse for 20 years. So I hope that they remember this and um, they can mark that event in 20 years with maybe their own families. 20 years and we're taking again right now. I think this is my first time actually yeah. looking at it for myself and every few minutes it gets covered more and more. What is it like for you? I mean, this is your second time seeing it. Yeah. So we took a, a, a gaze up and uh, talk about just for people who aren't outside. What are we seeing right now? So we are seeing the moon very slowly move in front of the sun. And, you know, I remember it being special back in 2017, but to have everybody here together, I, I didn't tell you this, but when I looked up the first time, it did make me feel a little emotional. So I can't wait to see what it's like when we get even closer. 
Thank you so much, Lisa, for taking the time out to speak with us today. We'll have much more coverage on what's happening here in Pullman. But for now, we'll send it back to you guys, Rudy. Oh, okay. my gosh. Trey, okay. thank you. Yeah. Uh, you just found out your son's down. I know. So my college <laughs> kids are just texting me pictures. One, yeah, one is down in Carbondale. One is at Purdue in, in Indiana. Love getting their glasses they're, ready. They're getting ready. Uh, totality less than a minute away in Dallas, Texas. So if we, oh, it is Dallas. Okay, so look to the left of your screen there okay. as you're watching us. Take we'll a take a full, a full picture. Totality coming in 30 seconds. Ooh, if you're watch watching us, yeah, there might be a delay uh, if you're watching a streaming, but we're going by the clocks you see on our screen. Uh, so it's 39, 36, 37. We're about 20 seconds from totality uh, in Dallas. If we can take that, uh, oh, there's, okay, uh, if we want to take it full, we can watch it, uh, it is and the, see, there it is. Dallas oh, wow. is the largest city here in the path of totality. Um, I cannot imagine how many people are looking up and seeing exactly what you're seeing right now. So in addition to everybody who lives in Texas, so many in Dallas and so many people travel to Texas wanting to experience this first. OK, so there we go. We've hit 40 uh, minutes straight up here. Uh, this is totality in Dallas, Texas, a better shot than when uh, we were joined by uh, Pooja, who was uh, in Bandera. So this is totality in, in, in Dallas. Look at that sliver of the sun. This is just a pretty amazing. I mean, it's 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 140 in the afternoon. And you see the NASA logo there. So they have scientists throughout the country mm -hmm. spread out trying to educate everybody on on this phenomenal event that's happening here today. You, we have cameras patched into all of this so we can bring it to you as we watch in real time. And you see that sliver uh, of the, of Ooh, the sun just slowly that. going away as totality has been reached in, in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> you think it's just the script so the photog is going to move the camera a little bit from NASA. Wow, uh, but as this goes on, slowly that moon will move away from this. There it is. Yeah, total darkness. As you experience that, keep this in mind. So the next total solar eclipse we will see in Chicago will be 2099. 2099. That one will pass through Rogers Park. That's a long time from now. The next U.S. solar eclipse will be in 2044, and you'll see it in parts of North Dakota and Montana. So that's coming in 20 years, and we're going to stay with this camera in Dallas, Texas, as they reach totality. Uh, and it's interesting to hear Larry said every 18 months or so. It happens somewhere. Somewhere on the globe, but a lot of times it's over the ocean uh, and there's no one out there. So this has just been such a rare event uh, as it's happened over a lot of North America. And there it is. It's just about two minutes, really. And it's passed by, and we'll get about four minutes maybe down in Carbondale, maybe a little bit less. Uh, but this is Dallas, Texas. Totality happened at uh, 1.40 our time. So we're going on exactly two minutes from that. And this is the shot you see so often. Yes. Uh, of yeah. that sun behind the moon. But watching that as it went dark was just something pretty cool. I, I can't wait to talk to my kids after today to see what hey, they're Robert, experiencing. Yeah, oh, go ahead, Larry. Yes, yeah. Oh, Larry is with us. Larry, Larry we can hear Robert, you. Jerry. Take it away. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, He's in hey. Well, you know, I've been watching some of the clips that are coming down from Texas, and, you know, we're getting a lot of views of the prominences, which are those little flares that kind of flare out around the circle of where the eclipse is. And the sun is in a solar maximum right now, so we're getting these really great views of the corona and the plasma that's being ejected from the sun at this time. It's just spectacular to see. And that shadow of the moon that's down in Texas right now, it's going to travel 2,000 miles per hour and come right at us over in Carbondale at 159. That's how fast the shadow of the moon will track right along the Earth as uh, the, the path of totality moves its way on. So Larry's in Carbondale, where we're going to see totality here uh, a little bit later. But I'm glad because this was the question I wanted to ask you. So if, as we're watching this in the top right of that strike, the northeast quadrant of this uh, live picture from Dallas, is that a solar flare right there? It probably is. I don't have a direct view of what you're seeing right now, but that would be, if it looks like a little curl or a little thing coming off the sun, that would be a solar flare and solar plasma. And I got to bring in Ken Walchek right now, too. He's with the Adler Planetarium. So we're getting these views mm -hmm. of the uh, the corona and these little kind of flares coming off. Tell me exactly what that is. What you're actually seeing is filaments of the sun that are, you're, you're seeing them from the top view, uh, as opposed to when the total eclipse comes, it'll actually be the side view of things uh, being ejected, the plasma, like you're 
Andrew said, being ejected from solar storms off the edge of the sun. When you see them from the on the surface of the sun, looking up from the top, they look like little kind of streaks and filaments. That's what you're saying. Interesting. And so what's fascinating about the corona, which is the part you can see right now in totality, is it is extremely hot, hotter than the surface, right? Yes. Uh, it's actually about a million degrees, which is weird because the surface of the sun is about 10,000 degrees, give or take. So it's a million degrees. Yes. That's what we're seeing right now. No, not yet. You're going to actually see the corona. The corona is the, think of it like the atmosphere of the sun, the extended okay. atmosphere of the sun. It's only visible for us on Earth uh, for during a total solar eclipse. So in a few minutes, when it hits totality, we should be able to see the corona, which is that outer atmosphere of the sun. And right now in Texas and Dallas, they're in totality. So we're showing some of that video uh, right now. Yeah, and I heard it might be a little cloudy. Hopefully they had views. I think they got some breaks in the clouds great, down there. Great. Yeah, That's it's good, good to hear. hear, good to hear. Yeah. And so also talking about the science of this, mm -hmm. this is, like you said, the opportunity for scientists to do research that you mm -hmm. can only do during an eclipse. Mm -hmm. Tell me some things that they're working on. Um, actually, I'm not too uh, familiar with some of the other, like maybe NASA research research that was, that's being done with it. Um, there are some community science projects that are yes. being done where folk, they're asking action, asking uh, folks that, for example, if you're in somewhere where there's nature, start an audio recording and then what they can do and you share it with NASA and what it'll, they'll do is they'll compile all those and see if they can find out how different species respond to the actual solar eclipse. Right, because yeah. everybody kind of responds differently. Yeah, yeah. And now uh, we did the weather balloon launch here mm -hmm. as well. Yep. What kind of data are they going to get from the balloon launches? Um, there were two teams. So one from Iowa and I think one from uh, New Hampshire um, and uh, I might be wrong I'm not sorry um, and they are one of them is doing a live video feed from the stratosphere um, and then the other uh, and then they have some other uh, experiments um, one of them is looking at I, I do believe atmospheric um, pressure and um, temperature during the eclipse awesome Ken thank you very much thank you. are you excited to see this yes it's definitely. incredible isn't yes it? I yeah. hope you are too yeah oh my gosh you have no <laughs> yes. idea it's so great Ken thank All you very right. much you. And, you know, uh, also down here Rob and Judy we're getting closer it's 159 is the official totality here in Carbondale and all these people that are here in the stadium are going to be very excited for that eclipse I remember last time there was a, a like a cheer of oh wow when it happened it was really fantastic yeah I definitely can't wait to see it Larry uh, is my is your photographer Mike today right you and Mike yeah it's it's Michael Maher as well yeah, yeah so he's right here and I've got uh, Oh, I've just, it looks like they've, so it's already getting dark there because it looks like they've put some artificial light on you, right? Well, I've got some lighting on me right now, but we're going to turn that off in just a few minutes because we want to experience the, the totality with every light off. And you can kind of get a little sense that the atmosphere is getting a little eerie right now. The yeah. shadows look are, are looking a little different. And you can just kind of see there's somewhat of a murkiness to the sky. Uh, there's some hazy clouds as well, but there's just a difference in the light quality right now that's really fascinating. And I got to bring in one other person here. I got another guest. This is Daniel Thomas from Enjoy, Illinois. Uh, Daniel, I tell you, this has brought a lot of people to Southern Illinois. It sure has. I mean, in 2017, we saw over 200,000 people. I was actually out on the region yesterday visiting some of our Illinois made makers, our wineries, our barbecue restaurants, and they're all telling me that it was far busier pre and, and more uh, business than in 2017. That's so fantastic. That just shows that people are coming into the region earlier and later as we'd ask them to. And when people go home either today or tomorrow, back your patience, right? Absolutely, and I think people were encouraging to stay in the region tonight and go home tomorrow so that they could get out and experience what Southern Illinois really has to offer. Excellent. How much money do you expect the uh, region to take in this time? Well, those visitors spent upwards of uh, $18 million in our small businesses right across this region in 2017. It's, so here's hoping we can break a record. It's fantastic. Good for Carbondale and good for Southern Illinois. For Southern Daniel, Illinois. thank you so much thank for joining us. I appreciate it so much. So Rob and Judy, just in those few seconds where I was talking with Daniel, it's getting a little bit darker. You can kind of make it out. I don't know if you can see, especially if you look at some of the crowd, like just the faces of people, there's a different appearance in the way people look. It's it's kind of fascinating. I don't remember that the last time. And I tell you the difference from the last time is that we had some cloud cover last time. Today we've got some very high cirrus clouds, but they're really thin, so they're not really blocking it too much. But it is, it's getting interesting. I tell you, it's getting really interesting wow. to see. Yeah, we could tell, you could see it on the camera. That's why we're asking, like you can see that glow you're describing. 
It's just really unique uh, to see behind you. And that's a live picture right there next to Larry looking up at Carbondale. So Larry, stay right there. We're going to hop on over to Indiana real quickly and check in because a totality will happen in central Indiana near Indianapolis about seven minutes later than Carbondale, right? And, and Greg Dutra is there with us. So let's go to Greg and see what he is seeing. It, it, it's, it looks like it's hazy. I mean, are you seeing blue skies? I know it's hard for us to see back here what you're looking at. Absolutely. So this is what we, we planned on doing this for you. This is what we want to do for you. Uh, you're absolutely a thousand percent right. It has gotten uh, not only darker, but also cooler. And the wind has picked up just a, a slight amount too. Or maybe we weren't noticing the wind when it was warmer. So what I want to do is I'm going to have a photographer, Steven here. He's going to put the camera back on the setting. It was the last time you came to me and you'll see exactly how much we've had to adjust our camera. I think the aperture was set at like a five, he said, or something like that. And now it's somewhere closer to a nine to get a legitimate shot of us. So we've got our panel lights set up here uh, because during totality, we're probably gonna need them for you uh, to even see us. Of course, we're gonna go dark for a little while so we can all kind of take it in, but we have certainly noticed the light quality diminish. It's almost like there's a big storm arising, arriving soon. It's getting late to the day, but there's just cirrus clouds out there. I mean, we're certainly not getting an obstructed view, uh, you'll also notice behind me that there is a balloon back there and that balloon has been going up and down the entire time. Somebody's going to see the eclipse from that thing. Check out the view that we got just a little while ago. Here we go. Just unbelievable sights. My photographer, the lucky guy who got to go up, the balloon has been all sold out uh, all day long. So that's a pretty spectacular and unique view here uh, as we are in, yes, Indiana for the eclipse. And as I mentioned before, it's been some 2,000 years almost since an eclipse has moved over this very spot. People are starting to stand up more. Uh, people are leaving their glasses on for longer. When the moon just tucked in, there was like a kind of a 10 minute period where everybody was glasses on for a bit, glasses off, glasses on, glasses off. Now a lot of people are almost keeping them on the entire time. They're trying to take the cell phone picture through the glasses that Judy and I were talking about. Uh, and you can tell the anticipation is starting to build a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, for a lot of us here around. It's going to be tough to find words, I think, during totality for me. Oh, uh, well, we, we can't wait to come can't back to you when yeah. that is happening. So now we're going to yeah. hop on over to Arkansas, I believe, because yes. their totality is literally happening in a few seconds. This is Russellville, Arkansas. Cool. 151 uh, was the, the plan, I believe, for totality. Is that 151.54? 151.54 was the time that we had. So that is a live picture you're looking at at Russellville, Arkansas. There's those things Larry was talking about, the flares. And I mean, there was almost more now because it's, it said that the shadow's moving at 2,000 miles per hour. Uh, there, that's a great shot. And apparently in Arkansas, at this moment, there are more than 200 couples getting married. <laughs> so the network had a piece on this earlier. So they all planned it, of course, for today. Um, quickly planning it together, pulling it all together. More than 200 couples getting married at this moment um, with that totality in the sky. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> Congratulations to all of them. Yes, <laughs> literally saying I do as you and I get to watch uh, another uh, totality moment. Wow. This in Arkansas. We were in Texas a, a few minutes ago in Dallas, mm -hmm. and now we've moved here. It's got Southern Illinois in its sights, and then Indiana. And we're going to go along for the whole ride with you. That Look is that. really that is neat. The, yes, there so are we more flares than we, last time. We started in Mazatlan, Mexico, and then we showed you Del Rio, Texas followed by Bandera, Texas. And then we just saw Dallas, which is the largest city in the path of totality. And yes, once again, right now you're looking at Arkansas. There's something odd happening downtown too. And uh, we're, we've opened our, we're on State Street and uh, Chicago Theater's right across from us. Maybe we can turn the camera at some point as we get totality to show you. But we're noticing, and I, I, it could be a placebo effect for me. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be 94% in Chicago. I wanna make that clear. Yes. Um, but we can usually see out this time of day. And it just, I would describe it as a, a, an orangish tint kind of coming over the city. It just looks a little different. The light certainly looks different downtown. Yes, looking outside our window here on State Street. Yeah, so there. Not sure you can tell with um, with that camera shot yeah, because you're looking at the Chicago Theater. Well, and the iris, like Greg had a great example there. Uh, we want to go to Cheryl real quick. Uh, Cheryl Scott's got more for us. She's out at Adler. Maybe she can help tell the tale what we're seeing here in Chicago. Oh, Ooh, wow. Yeah, that's darker. Yeah, yeah. 
it is getting a little bit eerie. I wasn't expecting it to dim this much already. We can see a noticeable difference. I mean, it is still light out, but there is definitely a hue to the air, the sky, the atmosphere. And my photographer just pointed out I had goosebumps. The temperature has dropped a little bit. We have people cheering in the background. We are getting so close to 94%, which means it could even still continue to get a little bit darker. This eclipse is so unique. I compare this back to 2017. The moon this time around is 8 thousand times closer to the earth. That's why the path of totality is so much wider. That's why the coverage here in Chicago is more than back in 2017. One of those reasons. And we just have thousands of people out here. Are you guys all noticing the difference, the color change? We're all getting so excited, but it is truly a really rare, unique experience to see this all come together here in Chicago. Thousands of people. I'm just going to be keeping my eye on the totality that you guys are showing as well. Larry, very lucky. Greg, very lucky in totality. But I'm also so fortunate because I didn't know if we were going to be able to see or feel some of those effects because we're not in totality. And here in Chicago, we're getting that. You're seeing that outside of the State Street Studio. I'm looking up using these glasses and we are I mean, I would say 80% of the moon right now is covered. Guys, we are almost at 207. We're getting so close to 94% totality here in Chicago. What an experience. We'll send it back to you. I know we're getting very close to totality in Carbondale. And that picture that you see right next to Cheryl on your screen is a picture looking up from the Adler. Yeah, if you have your glasses right now and you're streaming us in the Chicago area, you can see that. That's, Make yeah. sure you wear your glasses and you're careful. So Carbondale. We're Let's, minutes. How, yeah. I mean, how far? Like a couple minutes here. 159 yeah. right. is a total. Larry, yeah, we're going to wash with you. Uh, we're going to just kind of let this thing breathe with you. Uh, three minutes or so until the solar eclipse in Carbondale. I cannot wait to hear the moment and also watch it with you, man. So enjoy your second eclipse, Larry. Thank you, man. I'm already getting emotional. It's kind of crazy, uh, but you can see a little sliver of the sun still there, so we can't look at it directly just yet. But I was looking at the the people in the stands, and there's, you know, you can certainly tell a certain cadence in people's breaths and how they're looking because they can feel the excitement. There's just like a certain kind of tension with what's going on, mm -hmm. and everything has gotten very darkish. It's that murky color. The colorings on the reds and the greens of people's shirts looks different than anything you've really ever seen before. It just is a different lighting than what any of our eyes are used to in the typical daylight. And I'm looking around the horizon as well, and what will be great to see is when we get into the complete shadow of the moon, it'll look like twilight, 360, 360 degrees all around us. And so that's gonna be quite emotional to see. Uh, I gotta mention too that we're gonna be able to see Venus and Jupiter right next to the moon once we get into totality. And we'll be able to see stars, stars during the daytime as we get into that totality phase. And right now, we're about two minutes away from that totality. I'm gonna put my glasses back on and take another peek at it. We've got our other camera running as well. Uh, and you're getting a really nice view of it because it's getting super close right now, Ralph and Judy. We're almost there. And there's a there's certainly a buzz with the crowd 13,000 here at Saluki Stadium. The excitement's building. We got the PA announcer announcing the uh, the the countdown timeline and she'll give us the exact time when we're in totality so we can take off our glasses. I can kind of tell you like my breathing is getting kind of faster just anticipating watching this again. Seven, almost seven years ago, I was down here right on this field watching the last eclipse. And that last one, we had to get a few breaks in the clouds to see it. This one, we've got some high cirrus clouds, but it's not, it's not going to block the view very much. We're still going to get a spectacular view of this eclipse. Oh, we're almost there. You can see it. It's getting so close. Yeah, just seconds away here. Oh, there's the one minute count there. About one minute away. Yep. I'm gonna take my glasses off. And, oh wow! Just in that span of having my glasses on and taking them off now, I haven't. I'm not looking at the sun. It is getting really dark. It is fantastic. It's so beautiful. And for all of our viewers oh, watching yeah. that. So. 
if we're looking at the sky, you can almost see the shadow coming right at us from the west, from the southwest. It's like it's like oh, a dark go. almost wall coming oh, yeah. right at us. Well, oh, oh my gosh, it's countdown so, will happen wow. soon. Wow, let's just listen to him. You can hear the crowd getting excited and starting. Oh yeah, oh here it is. <laughs> Look at that. We're almost there, about 14 seconds. Oh my goodness. There it goes. And we're in totality, folks. Wow! Holy cow! This is so much better than the last time. <laughs> there was the diamond ring, I just saw it a second ago. I see, I see a Venus right to the right of the moon right now. Oh, jeez. It is breathtaking. You see the corona and some of the flares coming off from the corona? Okay. Uh, you got to take a moment to look around the sky, the horizon. It's twilight all around us. A, a hush has kind of come over the crowd. When it first hit that totality, there was kind of a silence. I tell you, Robin Judy, this is just spectacular. And we're in this for four minutes and 10 seconds. Just amazing. The stars I see, it's gotten so much cooler. Uh, it was hot down here. It was like 84 degrees on this field with the sun blaring. Now it's probably like 70 to 75 degrees. Much cooler. It just feels lovely air temperature wise. It's just so hard to explain, Robin, Judy. It's just something you look at and you're like, it doesn't seem natural, but there it is staring at you. It's like a hole in the sky almost. It's really fantastic. It's really fantastic. All these people are all staring at it right now. It really has gotten quiet. I think there's a moment like this where it kind of takes you to be, you're, you're a part of something bigger than yourself. You're part, of the, you're part of this universe, part of this world. I see kind of like a red flare coming on the southern side of the, yeah. the moon yeah. there. You it kind of is it. like on the uh, basically six. Or, you got it too. You see it? Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not exactly sure what that could be. It's certainly probably a prominence uh, of some degree, some degree. Uh, so it's one of the solar flares coming off the sun. And I mentioned the sun's in a solar oh, maximum right, right now yeah. as well. So oh, we've got you see yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it's really. Yeah. Oh, Larry. Larry, we can see him it's with the camera oh, there shot. I see him. Wow. Yeah, there's one on the right side now, too. Yep. Yep. Yes. Oh, my goodness. It's so beautiful. Look at that. Oh, I, I, I just saw a bird land. That was one thing to watch out for was the animals. I just saw a bird land on the ground with confused. all these people around, which is something you probably wouldn't see. Boy, we sure could hear the silence that's come over the crowd, too. You know, it's much different than the last time when we got the peak and the crowd erupted. It's almost like a uh, there's a hush and a buzz. There is a little bit of a buzz, but there's everybody is just soaking this up, just enjoying the this moment. This is the moment we have been waiting for. Solar Eclipse 2024, our live coverage right here, a live picture looking up at Carbondale. Uh, thousands of people at Saluki Stadium where Larry is looking up at this same picture that you're looking at through our screens here. I tell you, I, I knew this moment was coming, but it just is spectacular. So we're ending in about five seconds as the announcement, and there's a big no from the whole crowd. <laughs> the crowd's not having it. Uh, and that's the wonder of a moment like yeah. this. None of us can control it. Oh, there it comes. None of us can stop it. We can all just watch it together. Ooh, oh, there's the that. diamond ring. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. 
That's the diamond ring effect. So that's when this, the sun peeks back out from the moon. It looks like a diamond ring, like a wedding ring. So amazing. Look at those flares. Wow. <laughs> There's the crowd. We did it. Oh, man. I have goosebumps and I'm not so, even there. I'm with you. Wow. I'm with you too. Uh, it's hard not to revel in the moment and the wonder of it. Sorry, guys. How are you feeling, Larry? Okay. <laughs> you probably don't know this about me, Robin Judy, but I'm a crier. So I got to let it go. got to let it go. <laughs> Okay, all right, pull it together, Larry. So you can kind of see the light coming back in right now. Oh, boy. Oh. Catching my breath now. Oh, this is interesting. So there's, you know how we had that murkiness in the uh, those colors in the sky before the eclipse? We have it back, but it's kind of a different murkiness. It looks more kind of, um, kind of whitish murkiness instead of a darker murkiness. That's kind of an interesting difference that I've noticed uh, from before the eclipse. And so what, what's happening now, Robin Judy, is this place is going to clear out pretty fast. <laughs> People are going to get out of the stadium. And we probably, got. We uh, want to continue the path. Head on, on, head on their way. I'm sorry. So we're going to. We, I know Greg's up next. Yep. Greg, it's going to be a great thing. <laughs> I can't wait. Sticking with Greg hey, right now. Stay there because we want to talk to you afterward, Larry. Just so great to watch. And I think he's having trouble hearing us, but we want to go to Greg Dutra yeah. uh, to, to see. Because that's <laughs> next on the path. All right, Greg. Guys, oh my goodness, uh, you know, everybody can feel it now. Nobody is looking down. Everybody is looking up now at the sun, and it's almost to the point where you can look at it with gla uh, glasses, and guys, it's getting dark really fast here. The light, like Larry said, is just so weird. And, uh, I feel you, Larry, man. There's definitely some emotions welling up inside. It's a, it's a spiritual, uh, I would say almost like primal uh, feeling out here. It's really hard to explain. I mean, like we live in an age of satellites and cell phones, right? Like the, the cell phone that I'm dialed in, that I'm listening to you guys through can do the calculations that landed us on the moon. Uh, and, and we have instant answers all the time. And this is just something that kind of takes you back, you know, uh, almost like ancestrally here. Oh my goodness, guys, it's getting so dark. The, the light is very strange now, kind of some, some, uh, clamors coming up from the clouds it's tough you guys know me it's tough for me not to come up uh, with words but here we are as we reach totality people are pulling their glasses off oh my goodness he's right yeah you can see venus down to the bottom right hand side this is spectacular i mean venus almost in i'll let it breathe here Guys, this is something. You can see the ring uh, around the, the sun, of course, the moon blocking it. I can see Bailey's beads. I can definitely see kind of on the top right hand side. It looks like almost a bead. And again, I mentioned that earlier. That's, that's the sunlight going through peaks and valleys on the moon. And you're actually looking at the topography of the moon uh, backlit from the sun. And yeah, it's, it's like night has fallen across the area and you can't help i mentioned this earlier the last time that this happened was uh, 8 31 in the spot that i stand i mean these are pre-columbian civilizations what do you what do you think when something like this happens you're standing in your field yeah uh it, it, it could only be a sign from whatever god you believe in yeah and you know is it a sign that you leave this land that it's bad is it a sign that uh you know you should throw down arms against your your foes it, it's it's deeply spiritual i could only imagine what folks who as i mentioned don't have the cell phone in their hands who back through history have experienced this uh would think yeah, of something like this century. they had no warning I mean, that this would happen for you to yeah, be a part it, of something that it, hasn't it, happened it, since then yeah, it, it truly is unbelievable, and uh, you know this would this would drive ancestral meat, I guess, to, to to write it through the ages, kind of like we're doing now, modernly. You know, with the special report, here we are, telling people about it, telling people about the experience, and yeah, guys, it is it is dark out here. It looks like the sun has set, uh, and it's it really is spectacular. You can see the corona, the atmosphere around the uh, the sun. It, it really truly is special. I'm gonna I'm gonna experience this, and we're gonna toss it to Cheryl as you guys are getting towards. 
uh, the best part for you in Chicago. Yeah, Cheryl, absolutely, take it away. This Greg. Is truly take it in right now. So we are going to hop on over to Cheryl Scott, which is who, who is right here in Chicago at the Adler, and we can tell outside our studio yeah, it just, the shadows are a lot different. Okay, Cheryl, take it away. <laughs> I had to put my jacket back on because the temperature dropped. I was getting goosebumps. You can feel it. You can look up here with the glasses and we are seeing <laughs> just a crescent sun right now here in Chicago. I know we're just north of totality, but we're still seeing such a show. It is remarkable to just look up in wonder. Just one of those moments where everything comes in a line, the earth, the moon, the sun. It's so rare to be able to witness something like this with your favorite city, the community in Chicago. I mean, we have thousands of people. It is incredible. I know we're not seeing the show down in Indianapolis or Carbondale where you can see Bailey's beads, the Corona, um, the, the diamond ring, all of those things, but it's still such an amazing phenomenon to see this all come together. Oh, just saw a bird fly by here with that eclipse. We are at 94% totality right now. We're going to stay this way for a few minutes. We had 87% back in 2017. I can definitely tell you this is there is a feel here. There is, you can feel the change. You can see the dimming of the light. It looks eerie. It's not that dark, but are you guys enjoying this? Yeah. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you, what does this feel like right now for you? It's so cool and it's, um, it's getting really dark right now. And um, I wish, I, this is my first time seeing an eclipse. I love that. Yeah. Everyone is a scientist today. We're all out here together. Yeah. We're all we're all in this moment together. It is really, really remarkable. Science, just everyone here in Chicago. Guys, I know you're witnessing the same thing outside. I'm glad that you can also see the live stream of the eclipse happening. We've been waiting for this moment, 2024. It's here yeah. right now. Yeah. It's incredible Back to, you to guys. see. Yeah, it's to see the difference between 100% totality and 94%. Uh, you on the left there is a live shot of the sun and the moon here in Chicago. Uh, so that's what you would see if you were wearing your glasses. That's what Cheryl and all those Chicagoans out there are seeing right now uh, as well. And it just shows. I mean, and the colors have changed downtown. It's fascinating to watch life go on on State Street. And yet this celestial moment is something um, we're not going to see here again for a very long yeah, time. Yeah, Cheryl, I, I know you have thousands of people right there, but on State Street, there are people pausing, looking up at the sky with their glasses on, trying to just take yes. in that moment. It's so amazing, and I'm just so happy that, you know, the build-up to this event, we've been talking about it for weeks and even years. So many scientists prepping for this. There's eclipse storm chasers in the path. So much data is going into this. Scientists are studying the corona of the sun right now as totality is happening. Special probes have been launched for this event. It's been definitely in the making and we can feel it and seeing Chicago, our lovely city, the people here coming out and showing up for science. It is, it is something that brings everyone together and is there anything better than that? So I love to hear that you're also seeing folks just down in the city, walking on the street, taking that moment to pause, to reflect not take pictures on your phone, stare at that eclipse in wonder, realizing that there are so many forces, way more powerful us uh, than, than us here on planet Earth. It, it's truly just something that you can take in and realize, wow, the atmosphere, planet Earth, astronomy, it's all incredible. I love it. I'm just in the moment here, guys. We are in the moment. And thank you to Adler for hosting us and bringing everyone here out together. It's amazing. And what a rare moment. The next time Chicago will see a total solar eclipse, 20 
99. So we're probably, we're not going to be here. We? No, <laughs> so this is not. it. This yeah. is great. Yeah. Hey, Cheryl, stick around. Thank you. We'll come back to you. Let's head to Cleveland, Ohio, where the total eclipse is beginning. This at 13 past the hour, which is right now. We're at 1326. Total, total, totality will last there for just under four minutes. So by the way, again, that's a picture of right here in Adler. Um, but then we will show you a picture in Ohio. So this is the first total eclipse in Cleveland since 1806. And there won't be another one here until 2444. It's a long time from now. <laughs> uh, we're told some 200,000 people were expected to gather downtown for this event in Cleveland. So totality, totality in Cleveland, Ohio. It's, it's wild because we've been on the air a little bit more than an hour. Yeah. And that we've gone from Mexico through Texas, yes. Arkansas, Carbondale, Indianapolis. Indianapolis. And, and on the move we go into uh, Cleveland, Ohio. So it's been uh, it's been pretty incredible to see uh, a couple difficulties here. Work with us here as we're trying to switch our camera angles here. You might see a few different things. Uh, there's some of the solar flares that we were talking about earlier. And to hear Larry during totality totality see that take off the glasses and be able to see that. Was that. Pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, because <laughs> that's something you see every. Okay, something else interesting going on in Cleveland. So the White Sox are there okay. apparently, right? And some fans, a lot of fans who are in Cleveland right now for the Guardians home opener. So they're calling it a day night single header. There will be batting <laughs> practice, then a science lecture, and then a baseball game. Hey, maybe this will That's get pretty the pretty cool. Side. White Sox score some runs, baby, put a little winning streak <laughs> together. Go. That would be okay as well. Uh, it's hard to see here, but it is totality in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, there you see some flares that we were talking about as well uh, when it went over Carbondale, SIU. They're kind of in the bottom uh, quadrant there. I guess 4 p.m. if you were looking at that sphere like a clock, you can see that that solar flare. Uh, and then another one up in the, the northeast part of, um, of that quadrant too. It's just, it's just fascinating to watch. It has been so cool to be able to sit here actually on, on the anchor desk in the studio without having uh, the opportunity to be out there in the field. But to watch this path of totality start with our first picture from Mexico. Yeah. Um, people there were lining the beaches looking up at the sky and then, you know, kind of following it through this whole time to right here. This is awesome. You had tears in your eyes. I, I saw we what? both I welled up. wasn't sure how I would feel right. about this moment. I mean, because whether you have an interest in this or not, it to see it is something uh, incredible. And you heard Greg get into, uh, you can study why this affects so many people differently, right? Everyone has an opinion on it. Uh, some are indifferent, uh, some are moved to tears. Yeah. Uh, some just appreciate the wonder uh, of the cosmos. And I think you throw all those things in and the commonality is we're human beings spinning around on this rock. <laughs> yeah. And, and we, we are able to pinpoint when these happen but there is nothing we can do to change that. And long after all of us are gone, these solar eclipses are still going to occur, and I just think that is something to marvel at. It's uh, really hard to wrap your brain Earlier, around. we also heard from uh, John Garcia. He was up in Palatine at the high school there and the science teachers there. So a shout out to all the science teachers, right, right who are so excited about this day. They have been, this is what they live for. This is what they study, and this is what they're trying to inspire kids to do. And today they have the undivided attention, mm -hmm. thanks to the sun and the moon of their kids. Uh, next in the path would be New York. There we got a clear shot shot for you uh, of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, you're right ab about that. Oh, it's not Cleveland. Sorry. Uh, you're, you're right about that. I mean, I think it, it, there's so many kids who will learn from this uh, and, and be able to talk about it in yes. class uh, and just kind of wonder uh, what the next, where the next one will be. And then you, some of them will say, okay, I want to go. I want to go see yeah. the next one, which is just 20 years away, but not just here. not right here. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Here, uh, in the city of Chicago. Uh, so now you were talking about the White Sox face the Guardians after the eclipse. That will be uh, something that will be interesting to see uh, how they play uh, as this passes through Cleveland, Ohio, and then it has its sights set next on the state of New York. And for all of you who are streaming us right now, thank you for, you know, being with us for this moment uh, for our total solar eclipse in 2024. Uh, we are in the studios here in Chicago. So wherever you are, 
Hope you had a great time viewing the sky with us. It, it was neat to watch how, depending on cloud cover, because it was hit or miss for a lot of people. And you heard Larry talk to someone from the state of Illinois about how much this is going to generate perhaps $20 million yeah. for the state in tourism revenue. So for Southern Illinois University and the, and the community of Carbondale to get the weather they did. Oh, phenomenal. Huge. Phenomenal. Right? And then you saw uh, Greg and Fishers, which is not far from, uh, from Indianapolis. And even though it was hazy and cloudy there, still darkness in totality and so it didn't matter whether you were looking at clear skies or not if you were in that path of totality you were gonna have a chance to experience uh, here picture. we go this which we're gonna watch again uh, let's let's just stay on until we can't uh, take cameras anymore because this has just been awesome and how fortunate you and I get to see this over and over we'll again never from, forget because it. we have cameras in different parts of the country so that is coming to you from New York as that path of totality is moving of course continuously here this afternoon Afternoon. Um, Larry had mentioned even before he went down to Carbondale, he said right afterwards, uh, traffic. I mean, there's tremendous traffic jam. So if you can just kind of stick around, you know, stay around a little longer and take it in before you get on the road. A lot of people were going to do that. Larry said in 2017, coming back from SIU, 10 hours to the city of oh, Chicago. Yeah. And so people were saying, just stay there, have fun, talk amongst the people who witness it with you and don't have to worry about that traffic to rush on. What do we got to rush back to? After something like this, right. it's neat that the whole world and certainly the United States of America is stopping and we're looking at something together. Uh, there is no divide on what's happening, just uh, unity as we as we look at the wonders uh, of the cosmos. We want to go back to Larry, yeah, where it's daylight again uh, and see how he's doing. It looks like the bleachers have cleared out at Saluki Stadium. Larry, yes. that was awesome to watch with you. Uh, we were here with you listening to every moment and sharing some of that emotion from here getting emotional. Can't imagine what it was like for all of you down there watching it in person. Well, you mentioned how it's like a, a, it's obviously a perfect alignment of the sun, the moon, and the earth, and how fortunate we are here to be in this spot to enjoy something like that. Is it's just something that you, I don't take it for granted, and I hope people who are down here in the path of totality also don't take it for granted too, because it is such a rare thing to see and experience, and that emotion that comes with this, that you're part of something that is bigger than yourself and more important than yourself too in many regards that that's a huge thing uh, i, I want to talk a little bit about rob and judy we saw those little red kind of flares coming off the eclipse and i mentioned there were prominences and i got hunter miller here with me right now from the adler planetarium and that's what we were seeing the the prominences of the sun this the, the solar wind and energy almost yeah exactly so we got the chance to look at three different layers of the sun today and we were looking at the partial phase through our solar viewers we were looking at the photosphere during totality we saw that brilliant white wispy corona but yeah. those prominences are, are in a middle layer between those two called the chromosphere. These prominences are massive licks of plasma following kind of disrupted magnetic fields uh, coming out of the sun and they only last a few hours. So seeing some that were big enough to be visible to the naked eye during that total phase is really special. That was the cool part because there were a couple of them and that's mm -hmm. interesting. They only last a couple hours. So we were fortunate with the timing where we got to see them. Exactly. And they were so brilliant red too. Yeah, so uh, we, get to, we get the chance to look at those kinds of things all the time at the museum, but seeing them directly with your eyes is a super rare occurrence. And you know, they're many times the size of the Earth to yeah. give you a good scale of what we're seeing. And right now, the sun is super duper active. It's moving towards solar maximum. So that made this total solar eclipse a particularly spectacular display. You saw how far out the corona was reaching, yes. seeing those prominences, the sunspots that we were able to see during the partial phase earlier. That's a great point, because the corona seemed extremely extremely far away from the moon. Like it really shot out pretty far. That's an interesting observation. I didn't catch that until you just said it. Yeah. Exactly, you know, I saw at least for us here uh, down in Southern Illinois, seeing the part uh, kind of erupting off the Northwest portion that yeah. extended almost four solar diameters out into out into space. Really, really special. 2017 did not have no. such a spectacular Corona. And so I was really looking forward to seeing what the Corona would be like today. It's very difficult for us to predict these things in advance. And it put on the show that I was totally hoping for. It Everyone got their money's worth here, although it was a free event, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Hey, Hunter, thank you very much for joining us. I oh, appreciate that it, as well. It was hey, a joy. I'm, I got some kids over here. Come over here, guys. You guys are high school students in Carbondale? Yeah. Awesome. What did you guys think of this? Um, it was really cool. Um, some of us, this is our second time seeing an eclipse, so sure. it was really cool to see it again and have a little bit longer totality, so that was really cool. And how, how awesome is it that here in Carbondale, two eclipses in almost about seven years? 
Yeah, it was like really amazing. Like she said, uh, two eclipses in seven years. Uh, it was a very great experience. I don't really remember the first one, but I'm happy that I got to experience this one. And it, I don't, I, I just can't explain it. <laughs> well, and I, I know it's not cool as teenagers to say you cried a little bit, but did anybody tear up? Did. Uh, I did, I did as well, so that's great. Well, thank you guys for joining me, and thanks for you guys for volunteers here today, right? Yeah. So thank you guys for your help today. This has been fantastic, so thank you very much. You were live in Chicago, so hey, say hi to the people in Chicago. All right, Rob and Judy, I tell you, it's been a, a great afternoon here, uh, and now that the sun is, or the moon has moved on by a little bit, it's looking like daylight again. It's almost like normal daylight to some degree. <laughs> it's so wild. What a see. phenomenon, yeah. Uh, how you doing, how you feel? Yo, I, I feel good. I, you know, there's a, there's a sense of me of being a little embarrassed that I did have cr the, the, the hard cry. But, uh, you know, it's, it's an emotional thing, especially like you, when you think about how special it is to be here in this very moment, in this very place, in this, this, this time of the, uh, the world. And, I, I, you know, I go back to, I think about, you know, our ancestors before we had science to understand what was going on. What was their feelings when something like this happened? You know, th how could they describe that in a way that where they didn't have the science knowledge of what is happening? And you think about the human history of eclipses and all the things that have happened. Uh, it really kind of sinks in about the magnitude of what I've just experienced. That's a great way to put it. Um, don't hey, grown yeah. men cry. <laughs> um, I I was tearing up with you, and so uh, just to experience that moment with you as it happened is something special. Uh, I, I thought it was awesome, man. Yeah. I, I think it's just so cool that you're able to, to share your your experiences with our viewers. That means a lot to them more than you think, Larry. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Rob. I I'm I'm kind of a an internal guy where I keep a lot of things in, so it, it feels good to get it out every once in a while, you know? Oh, I love it. I and, know. And we were right there with you at that moment. I mean, it was, it was beautiful to see. Larry, thank you very much for taking us along, you know, as you're experiencing that uh, uh, down south in Carbondale. And then we want to hop on over to Greg Dutra. He has been camped out there in Fishers, Indiana. Yeah. Uh, hey, Greg. Hey, and that guys, that's that's like fatherhood did that to me. I had to hold back tears when the eclipse was going on, and while I was waxing poetically about whatever I was waxing poetically <laughs> about, somebody was actually doing something important. I'm gonna come on over, Kim. There was a bottle of champagne I saw. Yes. Uh, yes. What went down during uh, totality? Um, well, I was handed these glasses that were a little fuzzy to see through. Oh my goodness. But it's because. There's a message on the inside. It, it says, if you guys can see, will you marry me? So this happened just 10 feet away from me. Oh my goodness, how do you feel? I think I'm a little in shock still. <laughs> yeah, pretty From much. the eclipse or the engagement? Yes. <laughs> the answer to that question is yes. Uh, and uh, congratulations, oh my goodness. And uh, the planner here, uh, why? Why not? And obviously, she's my favorite person in the world. This is one of my favorite things to see in the world, only this is the second time, but you see it once, you have to see it again. You meet her once, you have to meet her for life, oh. and we can't wait to live our lives together. This, he's gonna make me cry. Uh, li so Larry, my coworker is down in Carbondale. He was watching the clips down there. Uh, you were down there in 2017 too, right? 2017, uh, me and my buddy right over here, he, we made the drive. We didn't predict for the traffic like we should have, so we got very close to Carbondale, but pulled off. It was the same, uh, same feeling. It was nice to be out isolated, but I don't know. It was cool. And I knew at that moment this was something that we need to chase and see every time it is possible to see it within reason. And then, I mean, this just makes everything so much better and I can't wait. We are so happy for you. How, how long were you planning this, if you don't mind me asking? Six months, okay. I think. Yeah. With just getting our friends in from out of town and, uh, just my brother works here, so this is a great place to be. And other than that, I was confident of the answer, but <laughs> you never know. So I, I mean, you know, it, it, even if you're like soft, like it's, it's a soft yes, and you pop it during the eclipse, I feel like you, it's working <laughs> it's for you. Thing. Yeah, it's a sure thing it's there. A timing issue. <laughs> yeah. It, have you uh, have you texted everybody so far that you? Um, I've gone through a short list. Okay. We'll get to the rest of them later. All right, yeah. Good. Well, congratulations, you two. Oh my goodness, so special. I'm happy for you guys, and I'm gonna let you enjoy the rest of your day. So, guys, congratulations to the new couple. All right. Uh, what was that? Yeah. 
Oh, and he says, boiler up Chicago. Oh, oh, my goodness, I forgot to mention that. Today is such a special day for Indiana. Yes. Like, you get totality, and the Boilermakers are playing tonight. That's oh, right. Yeah, nice. Thank, Thank you, you for getting that in. That yeah. couple's living their dream. Great stuff <laughs> yeah. out there. Thanks for taking us along for yeah. the journey. All right, we got to check in one more time with Cheryl Scott, who is out at Adler with, um, I don't right, know, a few hundred guys. really close friends. to an end which officially ends here at 321 but it is still a party out here so many so many here thousands taking in the eclipse today we have students from U of Chicago how was this experience for you is this your first partial eclipse yeah it was my first ever solar eclipse it was amazing to be able to see um, such a um, scientific event in person like this and you came everyone. out here with your friends right? yeah i came out here with my colleagues from work awesome yeah. love that you guys came out here we also have a teacher and i wanted to talk to her because you and your students got the day off how important for everyone to take in this moment what was your experience like oh this was the most awesome experience i could ever encounter um beautiful uh, the people are here are wonderful want to say hi to my kids at saint nicholas of talentine school <laughs> <laughs> love you guys thanks for the day off dr London. And I think just the overall general feeling from everyone here in Chicago is just truly amazed to be together to witness this spectacle in the sky as one community, as one city, right? Yeah. An amazing phenomenon today, guys. Oh, thank you so much. It was great to watch all of you experience the partial eclipse here. We want to leave you with one final picture from Burlington, Vermont, where the uh, Total Eclipse is going to, going to end, end our coverage there. What a privilege to be with there all of you uh, today. Uh, Judy and I are just humbled for, to be a part of this and, and uh, enjoy it with all of yeah, you. Yeah, thank you so much for joining our special coverage of the solar eclipse of 2024. Extensive coverage coming up on Eyewitness News at 4 this afternoon, of course. Oh, and well done to our entire staff behind the scenes. You guys rock. This is something we will never forget. See you at 4. Happy solar eclipse.